I've tried to stray away from any negative commentary on Disney lately, I think because I'm just getting tired of my own cynicism. I've had a lot to say about both their business and creative decisions that I feel are more than warranted, especially with how I believe they moved very far away from the Disney difference that once defined their park experiences. Well, today's video is a return to the criticism, discussing a huge wasted opportunity taken by a Disney company that no longer takes its creative opportunities seriously. With the construction of Tron and the temporary but lengthy closure of the Magic Kingdom Railroad, it's a bit difficult to believe that the company never considered plussing what is already a rather underwhelming experience. Now don't get me wrong, there are plenty of people who love the Magic Kingdom Railroad and are ready to defend it, but to that I would respond, have you been on the Disneyland Railroad? Because if you have, you know how disappointing the Magic Kingdom version is in comparison, which is why it's so frustrating that Disney didn't bother to update it in any meaningful way. In fact, the only addition to the railroad was not an addition at all, but rather just a black utilitarian tunnel that brings the train under the queue area for Tron, allowing it to pass underneath. The Magic Kingdom Railroad is otherwise unremarkable, bringing you through what is mostly just woods or patches of grass. It's not a complete waste of time and is a pleasant experience if you didn't know any better, but what makes it frustrating is how Disney really had the opportunity to enhance the overall experience and chose not to do so. With that in mind, today's video is going to be a breakdown of the differences between the Magic Kingdom and Disneyland Railroads, really illuminating how great this attraction could have become if Disney had bothered to try. In fairness, the Magic Kingdom Railroad is not without its merits, and one of its advantages over Disneyland is the theming in its stations. The Main Street Station in particular is actually quite nice and spacious in comparison to its Disneyland counterpart, and while the Disneyland Station does celebrate Walt's interest in trains as a hobby, the lower portion of the Magic Kingdom Station is almost set up like a museum. In fact, it's quite a bit more extensive than just a few photos of Walt with his miniature trains. What's also nice about the upper portion of the station is the theming, which is really reinforced with the paintings that depict railroads as a vessel of the American spirit for travel. Also noteworthy is a number of interactive coin-operated machines, such as a mechanical football table and various mutoscopes that for the most part seem to be working. Part of what I like about Disneyland is the small, intimate details you can find everywhere, and it's nice to see the Magic Kingdom expand on this for once. Speaking of detail, the Frontierland station is also worth discussing as well, made to obviously fit in with the Frontier theme. If you take the time to notice, in addition to the standard luggage and other props that convey that this was obviously a western train station, there are also a number of interesting elements scattered throughout, ranging from an advertisement for saddles, to tongue-in-cheek wanted posters for outlaws. For whatever reason, I really like this locked area labeled as baggage and freight, continuing that idea of providing small but intimate details, which is something that Disney rarely ever seems to do anymore. It's also worth noting that you can get some pretty nice views of Frontierland and Big Thunder Mountain from the station as well. In regards to the Fantasyland station, it just... kind of exists. Which is fine. For as great as the Disneyland Railroad is, its stations are just rather functional as well, lacking the detail I just highlighted. Starting from Main Street, one element that I can also praise about the Magic Kingdom Railroad is the view of the Seven Seas Lagoon. It allows for some decent views of the Grand Floridian and boats traveling the lake, which is certainly better than the Disneyland Railroad overlooking the Disneyland Esplanade, with the ugly facade of Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout unfortunately standing tall above everything else, running the view. On this first leg of the journey, the Magic Kingdom Railroad travels through Adventureland, where you'll witness quite a lot of foliage. This is then followed up by even more foliage. 
That's literally all there is. To be fair, the train does go past a railroad crossing where the parade floats travel backstage back to the warehouses, and at this point on the right, there is a vaguely adventure-themed display that just looks like a lot of random cargo. Soon after the crossing, there is also a seagull nesting atop a pole, but that's otherwise the end of anything remarkable. Continuing forward, you'll pass through a tunnel which goes over the drop for Pirates of the Caribbean, you'll then go past another railroad crossing where the parade enters Frontierland, and finally, you'll pass through a tunnel that, formerly, would let you briefly look into Splash Mountain, and will likely let you look into the Bayou Adventure once it's finished. Pulling into the Frontierland station, the journey thus far was a lot of pleasant foliage, but otherwise, there weren't really any interesting elements. Continuing forward though, the journey between Frontierland and Fantasyland is the highlight of the trip. On leaving the station, the right side of the train gets a great view of Big Thunder Mountain, which is perhaps the only advantage that the ride portion has over Disneyland. This is also a great way to view more of the details in the flooded town scene because of how quickly you move through it when you're on the coaster. It's not much, but there's also a brief scene you can only really see from the train, with a roadrunner confronting a rattlesnake. Passing Big Thunder, the train crosses a bridge over the rivers of America, allowing for quite the picturesque view as you move into the wilderness of the frontier. From here, you're going to travel mostly through a lot more foliage, with a few elements scattered throughout. On your right, you can briefly spot a fisherman and his dog on the dock of their river shack. Just a bit further, a keen observer can spot deer under the trees right as you pass by a Native American village with a number of wigwams. Next, a few more deer can be seen out in the open, and just past more foliage, another Native American settlement, this time made up of teepees. What's notable about this is that this scene includes a few low-level animatronics for the characters, and actually extends to the left side of the train as well, which was otherwise just Florida Swamp up until this point. Finally, the last show element you'll see is also on the left of the train, which is just a number of rattlesnakes gathered around an animal skeleton. Otherwise, the rest of the journey is just more foliage on the right, and a drainage canal on the left. Towards the end, the train will pass under a service road, and finally makes its way into the Fantasyland station. Once it's time to disembark for the final portion of the journey, the train moves past a water tower and a few themed station buildings. On the left, a billboard for Tron, which I assumed was intended to be temporary, appears, and riders can get a great view of the unthemed backstage area of the ride, which is definitely something that previous generations of Disney leadership would have made an effort to cover up. Moving forward, an audio clip plays, making it seem as if the train is being digitized as it moves into the tunnel ahead. Through this portion, the train just simply moves through a black painted tunnel, and on the left, a few windows allow you to get a view of the track. Coming out of the tunnel, you move through a corridor between the main Space Mountain show building on your left, as well as the exit gift shop on your right, known as the Tomorrowland Launch Depot. The final portion of the trip then brings riders past a ton of well-manicured grass, giving them views of the Contemporary and Bay Lake Tower, before then returning to the Main Street Station. While the view isn't necessarily bad, it's an area where there just isn't really anything going on, which I think really sums up the Magic Kingdom Railroad pretty well. I mean, yeah, it's cool seeing Big Thunder Mountain, and there's a few show elements here and there, but for the most part, the railroad is just moving either through light landscaping or far to swamp. That's not a bad thing if you're interested in a relaxing ride that takes you around the park, but it's time to move on to the Disneyland Railroad, really putting into perspective how much better the Magic Kingdom version could be. Starting yet again from Main Street, the Disneyland Railroad has an admittedly weak start as well. I know that I just criticized the Magic Kingdom version for having too much foliage and not much else, but this is exactly how Disneyland begins as well. However, there are two small but distinct elements on this portion of the journey through Adventureland. First, watch for a small rock jutting out into the track, and behind a nearby tree, you'll see a statue of a black leopard. It's not much, but it does seem to always elicit reactions of surprise. 
As you transition out of Adventureland and into New Orleans Square, you'll also pass by Mardi Gras float decorations and beads, before then heading into a tunnel that also goes over the drop in Pirates of the Caribbean. On exiting the tunnel, the train makes its second stop in New Orleans Square. While the station isn't too significant in itself, it does feel special within the larger context of the theming of the land. The tracks are also surrounded by themed buildings as well, which hides the pirate show building, and the telegraph office across the tracks plays a Morse code message that relates the beginning of Walt's speech on the opening day of Disneyland. This area is also where the trains replenish at the water tower, which makes this the longest stop of the journey. Once the train disembarks though, things immediately begin to get a lot more interesting. Just getting a glimpse of the haunted mansion, the train enters another tunnel that takes you over the corridor that the stretching rooms led out of. The train continues passing through a few colorful rock caverns, before then passing a window looking into Splash Mountain, or what will be Tiana's Bayou Adventure. On exiting the tunnel, the train moves over Critter Country and past the Hungry Bear Restaurant, resulting in some interesting views from the train, and a fun element for diners to watch as they eat. The train next moves over a bridge that crosses one of the pathways into Galaxy's Edge, and emerges out into the wilderness of the frontier. Looking out into this much more impressive version of the Rivers of America, riders are first greeted by a Native American chief, giving a sign of peaceful permission to move through the land. Keen observers can spot a number of animals throughout this portion of the journey, including squirrels, deer, and beavers, among others. While there is definitely an element of beauty to the Florida foliage on the Magic Kingdom Railroad, the frontier wilderness is so much more impressive and majestic in this version. Eventually, the train passes by a Native American shaman who is better viewed from the river, but is still a pretty prominent element of the train. After passing him, the train moves past a teepee settlement that again, is neat to see from the train, but can also be seen better from the river. Passing over another bridge for another pathway that leads into Galaxy's Edge, the next portion moves past Big Thunder Mountain. It's obviously not as close as the Magic Kingdom version, but its iconic hoodoos are still quite a fun scenic element. While I haven't pointed out all of the animals, there were actually quite a few more along the Frontierland section of the track, as well as numerous props and elements that are difficult to capture on camera. Traveling over the final bridge for Galaxy's Edge, the train then moves into a pleasant landscape where you can see your final animal species, which is a family of foxes. From this point, the train moves into a tunnel and transitions to Fantasyland, as it emerges out near the Fantasyland Theater. The train then stops at the Toontown Station, which isn't nearly as stylistically fun as I would expect it to be. However, if you're sitting towards the front, you'll get a great view of the Matterhorn once the train stops. On the next part of the journey into Tomorrowland, the train will continue past as a small world, offering a unique perspective, and it moves through the facade, which is a neat kinetic integration. If you also didn't have a good view of the Matterhorn before, you'll certainly see it now too. The train then moves through a brief section of planters and trees, before then emerging into a railroad crossing as it transitions into Tomorrowland. Here, you'll see a few Autopia cars, as well as an agri-future billboard parodying the famous painting, American Gothic. As the train continues through Tomorrowland by the monorail track, you're likely to see a monorail travel by, and behind it, you'll see people driving cars around Autopia. This isn't the most interesting section of the railroad, but there is a lot of kineticism to it if you travel by at the right time. Once the train reaches the Tomorrowland station and continues forward, it next enters a tunnel with what is easily the best portion of the ride. Starting first with Native American ruins, the massive 306 foot long Grand Canyon diorama is revealed to riders, which was certainly the largest in the world when it opened. This portion of the railroad premiered in 1958 as a cross promotion with the Disney documentary titled Grand Canyon, as well as the Santa Fe Railroad and has been updated with a few new effects since, such as the lightning strike. The diorama is really interesting because there's so much to take in, and it's incredibly atmospheric, playing a small portion from Ferdy Grofe's Grand Canyon Suite as the train passes by. As riders move again into the dark, 
The train's narrator describes that this is the Grand Canyon that we know today, but now we're traveling back in time to the primeval world. These scenes emerge from the darkness and are recycled remnants from Ford's Magic Skyway, an attraction developed by Disney for the 1964 New York World's Fair. The music that plays throughout this scene is from the 1961 film adaptation of The Mysterious Island, which doesn't directly relate to prehistoric dinosaurs, but is still quite fitting. However, this series of scenes was directly inspired by the animated segments of Fantasia, so I have to wonder how it would feel if the Rite of Spring were playing over this portion. Regardless, the primeval world in conjunction with the Grand Canyon diorama is a great way to end the Disneyland Railroad. Emerging from out of the tunnel, the train moves past the wooded berm before then making its way back to the Main Street Station. The Magic Kingdom Railroad is by no means a bad attraction because it's quite relaxing and has a few noteworthy elements on its journey, but based on just content alone, the Disneyland Railroad just puts it to shame. It does admittedly have its weaker portions as well, such as when it travels through Adventureland or alongside Autopia in Tomorrowland. However, its stop in New Orleans Square adds so much to the general atmosphere of the land, and the section that moves through Frontierland is so much better developed than Florida Swamp. Of course, I think that both the Grand Canyon Diorama and the Primeval World are enough to easily elevate this version of the railroad just by themselves, but it still manages to outshine Magic Kingdom in most other aspects as well. It's also worth noting that the Disneyland Railroad has most of its cars facing inwards towards the park, acting as a vessel for a scenic tour as opposed to the forward-facing train cars of Magic Kingdom. Part of what frustrates me about the Magic Kingdom version is that again, with the attraction essentially being closed for a little over four years during the construction period for Tron, Disney did absolutely nothing to plus the experience. Yet, when Galaxy's Edge was being built for Disneyland, Disney temporarily closed and rerouted the Rivers of America, also rerouting the train in the process, and adding a ton of new details and rock work. While the Disneyland segment of Frontierland was still better than its Magic Kingdom counterpart previously, Imagineering went above and beyond in enhancing this new section, adding so many new elements that don't just add a lot to the railroad, but also to the people viewing this section from the river. For having four years to plus the attraction in any way that they wanted, Disney just did absolutely nothing. The section through Adventureland has plenty of room, even for static figures. While I doubt that Disney will be expanding beyond Big Thunder Mountain, I can see how this area could become a lot more interesting along the railroad if that does indeed happen. I'm skeptical that it will, but if Disney truly does have those plans, I can excuse this section remaining untouched until the future. I think the portion I dislike the most, though, is when the train travels through Tomorrowland. The Tron Tunnel is... Uh, incredibly stupid, as it's literally just a hot, stagnant tunnel painted black. The audio cue that plays on the train implies that the train itself is being digitized, so I have to wonder why there isn't any sort of interesting lighting effect in the tunnel at the very least. Disney seems obsessed with colorful lighting packages and projections lately, so I'm not sure why that was missed here. However, one of the issues with the railroad that bothers me the most is this open grass space that looks towards the contemporary. It's not a bad view, but one of the fundamental differences is that while the Disneyland Railroad tours Disneyland, the Magic Kingdom Railroad only really keeps to the outskirts, and in this case, feels as if Disney couldn't even be bothered with putting up a berm to keep the outside from encroaching. This section of the track also has a tremendous portion of unused space, and it seems like an incredibly obvious fit for a show building that could contain something similar to the primeval world, especially if Disney somehow managed to have the foresight to preserve the animatronics from the universe of energy. In fairness, I know that constructing a building like this would be incredibly expensive, but older generations of Disney leadership would have certainly considered it, if given the opportunity. So again, the Magic Kingdom Railroad is a perfectly acceptable form of transportation around the park with its own occasional merits. 
However, the Disneyland version is just so much better in almost every single way and has even received recent significant investment. The Magic Kingdom Railroad isn't disappointing just because it's inferior, but also because Disney just doesn't care about it, wasting an incredible opportunity during the construction of Tron. If you've made it here all the way to the end, whether you agree with me or not, you can at least do me a favor by leaving a like on the video. As always, if you're interested in discussions like these, you can always hit the subscribe button with bell notification so as to be alerted to new videos as they release.